Here we have uh, Robin, who's modeling for us today in this demonstration. And he has the Canon XM2 already set up on a tripod. At the back of the camera is where you load the batteries. This is the battery. At the bottom is two silver strips that you can see, minus and plus. These strips should be at the bottom of the battery when you insert it at the back of the camera. Also at the back of the battery, there's an arrow. This should be facing down when you insert it. Pull and lift the viewfinder, grab your battery, and remember to make sure that it's facing the right way up with the two silver strips at the bottom of the battery. Carefully slide the battery in To release the battery, press this battery release button. If you keep your finger on it, hold the battery and slide up and out. Easy peasy. If you're shooting indoors, you could hook up the camera to the main supply using a DC coupler, which is one of these. It's exactly the same size and shape as the battery and slides into the back of the camera exactly the same way. Guide to the top of the slot and slide down. To switch on the camera, the main switch is located beneath the handle grip. Push the little grey button and slide to camera. If for example the camera doesn't power up, at the back of the camera where the record button is, there's a standby switch, which may be set to lock. If you switch it back to standby, the camera should power up. If you want to play back your films that you've just shot, slide the main power button and slide to play. At the right hand side of the Canon XM2 is the tape cassette loader. The open eject button is right next to the zoom button. Carefully slide the open eject button and pull back the compartment cover. Get your mini DV tape. Usually there is an arrow indicating the top of the tape. This arrow should be facing down when you insert the tape into the camera. Also, the wheel should be facing into the camera, not out. Guide the tape into the cassette loader and slide it in. And before you close the compartment cover, push the tape loader into the deck. The deck will automatically pull the tape into the camera. Now you can close the open eject compartment. If you wish to use the LCD screen, at the left hand side of the camera, push the open button to flip out the LCD screen. The record button is located on the rear end of the camera to press record, push the red button in and usually after about five seconds the tape will reach optimum speed and you're ready for action. To operate manual focus, push the focus AM button on the left hand side of the camera. An MF symbol should appear in the viewfinder indicating that manual focus is on. Use the focus ring to focus in on your object till it's in focus. The zoom button is located on the right hand side of the camera on top of the tape compartment. At the rear left hand corner of the camera are the audio controls and the program selector button. This is the program selector button which should be set to P. Make sure that this is set to P so that you can control the camera manually. This is the audio record level, which if you want to record manually, set it to M. This allows you to adjust the volume either on the right hand channel or the left hand channel using the audio dials shown. You can monitor your audio levels using the audio meters panel on the left hand side of the camera. This is very useful to gauge whether your sound is too high or too low. To get decent sound levels, you probably want your sounds to reach up to the minus 12 decibel range. 
and maybe set your left and right hand channels different from each other. Maybe one like the left hand channel is set slightly higher than the right. An important thing to look out for is to make sure that your audio levels do not peak. If they do peak, that means that the audio may not be usable and may be distorted. This is indicated by the sound levels reaching up to the zero mark, the black rectangular dots stating that your audio has peaked.